Hey guys, welcome to the 2020 Land Rover Defender. We are in a 110 SE today. It is powered by a turbocharged and electronically supercharged and mild hybrid 3 liter inline 6. That's mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission. We have a 2 speed transfer case. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. this thing is freaking cool. It is your luxury overlander. And uh, Land Rover has done so many cool things to the design of this Defender inside and out. Uh, they've gone with a very minimalist, aesthetically pleasing design for the infotainment and climate controls. There's lots of useful cubbies and places to put things in here. And of course, we've got tons of off-road capability. This video today is primarily going to be an on-road driving impressions video. Uh, we have taken this off-road some this week, and it is incredibly capable, but I figure most people are just going to be driving this on the street 99% of the time, and uh, let's talk about what that's like. So the first thing I love about this Defender is just the way it looks. I think that adds to its cool factor inside and out. It's just a, it's just a neat looking SUV. There's all these cool little styling elements. You've got a really neat rear end. I love the integration of these taillights into the body. The wheels are a very simple five spoke design. I think they look great. You can slap on some accessories here on the side to store jerry cans or what have you. And that is another thing that's really cool about this Defender is there are so many beautifully integrated off-road accessories for overlanding and adventures that you can put onto your Defender. Land Rover's gone with this kind of chunky but functional interior. We've got cloth seats on our specced out model today. We've got a very cool door design here, a nice wood handle, some nice leather, cool plastic with these exposed bolts. And as you can see, the exterior color carries into the inside. And uh, so you better pick a color you like because you're gonna be seeing quite a lot of it. The rear seats fold completely flat you get this nice rugged plastic material on top. There is also a third row, but there's just not a lot of room back there. Probably an option box that I would avoid checking if I really was interested in a Defender. You have lots of USB ports, battery charging options back here. You have rear climate control. And look at this grab handle. That makes it nice and easy to get up into. A beautiful panoramic sunroof. And then of course these little safari windows that are reminiscent of Defenders in the past, which I think is very cool. Nice little homage. I'm not sure what this little cubby is, but you do get a five volt USB charger in there. Pretty cool looking interior. Let's keep walking you guys around the outside. The rear end of this Defender is just striking. The way this line comes to a just a square point and the shape of this, the silhouette from the back is just, it's, I think it's so cool. We've got some more storage solutions back here in this door. We'll show you guys a peek of this third row too. Like I said, not a lot of space back there, but in a pinch, I guess it would be usable. Personally though, I just get the two row and call it a day. You can lower and raise the vehicle right here to get better loading height with these two buttons. This is on air suspension and it is very comfy. You also have a nice big AC standard plug outlet there, a couple of hooks to hang grocery bags, just a lot of useful spaces to put things and do stuff. This rear door is quite heavy, especially with this tire on there. Got to put some muscle into it. This is a pretty impressive tow rating of over 8,000 pounds. On this Defender here today, we do have these Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires. They do a pretty good job, and it's definitely one of the more aggressive tread patterns available for the Defender. Got some more styling elements up here. Let's show you guys under the hood.
as you can see, we've already had a little bit of fun with this this week. Got the three liter inline six puttering away in there. There's no battery just because these strut tower mounts are so high up that you do have a positive and negative terminal that you can plug into and connect there. All right, I think let's just take this thing for a drive. There are plenty of walk around videos on the Defender with beautiful rolling shots and amazing B-roll. Let's just see what it's like behind the wheel. I like this integrated grab handle right there. There is a chunkiness and a uh, just a macho strength to the way this car feels from the door slam to the way everything just kind of is bolted together on the interior. It's just rugged luxury. I like it. While we're here, let's just briefly talk about some of the controls. You've got a uh, kind of a changing button layout on the steering wheel. Things are illuminated depending on what menus you're on. As you can see, this turns into a directional button where you can select your trip or your screen view. Over here, if you want to access your seat heaters or cooled seats, you just press in the climate control button, turn it to the left or to the right. Kind of a neat feature and then you can go in and press this button and select your off-road or driving modes so you have grass gravel snow mud rut sand rock crawl wade lots of cool programs there and then right here you have your air suspension controls you can slam this thing all the way down to the ground in access height or you can lift it way up in off-road mode and as you can see it lifts up pretty quickly it achieves that height in just about 5-10 seconds, if not less. And when you do have it fully raised up, I think there's around 11 and a half inches of ground clearance, which is very impressive for a stock vehicle. More than enough ground clearance to get you through most scenarios. And also, Land Rover gives you quite a bit of underbody protection and skid plates to get you through what you need to. It does make it a little bit more challenging to get into, but that's part of the fun. All right, we'll select normal ride height. We also have a slew of backup cameras and surround cameras. They're very high res. They're really nice to look at. You can see there's an off-road camera mode too. You can see what the differentials are doing, lock and unlock them. There's also a, a bunch of different towing cameras too, where you can see your trailer, see around the trailer with two mirrors. Pretty cool stuff. You can also go in and select different views of the car. So if you're, if you're doing some rock crawling and you want to avoid running over stuff, you can kind of scroll around your vehicle here see a front camera view I mean that's that's pretty neat it'll even mimic the lighting of your of your surroundings kind of gimmicky stuff I would rather just see things for myself or have a spotter if I'm off-roading but a neat feature nonetheless I'm sure in practice it's actually pretty useful of course we also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration all the good tech. Land Rover hasn't skimped on tech in this new Defender, for better or for worse. So how does this thing drive? Well, we've kind of got the top spec engine here with this 3.0-liter inline 6. It's quick. There is no messing about here. It gets up and goes. I am glad to see some inline sixes making their way back into vehicles these days. This is a great powertrain. This thing drives awesome. You feel like you're in a luxury vehicle, but yet you have so much off-road capability. This has independent front and rear suspension. Gone are the solid axles. And I think this is so much better for it, especially on road. It's incredibly comfortable. This air suspension soaks up all the bumps very well. The ride quality in this Defender is fantastic. It's definitely one of its biggest strengths. Let's 
let's see what we can do with a 0 to 60. Just roll into the throttle here. Pretty quick. You can also throw it into sport mode. No paddle shifters, but at least this uh, manual selection mode is the right way. Back for upshifts, forward for downshifts, just like a race car. Dynamically, this thing drives awesome, and it's incredibly comfortable off-road on rough pavement too. I do have a couple complaints about this Defender dynamically. One, you can probably hear there's a little bit of wind noise and that's just due to the shape of this thing. If you're gonna look cool with this boxy squared off shape, you're gonna pay for it in uh, NVH. But I think that's probably not the worst thing. My other complaint is at low speeds, the brakes on this tend to be a little bit too touchy for my preference. Um, these are, this is a brake by wire system and I've been really impressed with a lot of brake-by-wire systems I've driven. They seem to modulate really well, they're progressive, they're linear, but this tends to be a little bit too strong on initial tip-in, especially at low speeds. So if you're trying to control your braking down a hill in an off-road situation, or just driving around a parking lot or in the city at you know normal speeds, it can tend to be a little bit rough for you, and you have to recalibrate your foot pressure just to get used to this Defender and how it feels. Otherwise, this thing drives great. With the independent suspension, the ride quality is absolutely sublime. You combine that with the air suspension on this and the versatility that you get from that, you definitely feel like you're in something special. This inline six sounds nice too. No complaints about this eight-speed automatic. It does a great job selecting the gears you need. It's pretty quick to downshift. It suits the character of this car. Get just a hint of turbo whistle on light throttle. For all the off-road capability that this has, its road manners are incredibly well-tuned and uh, very driver-friendly. As always, we have kind of an interesting cruise control slash speed limiter set up here. So you've got this button that says cruise control and limiter. The cruise control, we do not have any radar guided system. It's a little bit slow to kick on and uh, it's a little bit distracting to engage because it's slow to kick on and you never quite know which mode you're in. Otherwise, it just functions as normal cruise control. There's nothing special about that. The speed limiter is a neat feature because it will limit your top speed. I just wish there weren't as much of a delay in uh, engaging these systems as there is. and You don't have to kind of take your eyes off the road to look and see if they've, they've turned on or not. But the limiter is kind of a nice feature if you don't, just don't want to speed as much, you just engage that and you can accelerate all the way up to whatever you've set it to. And if you need to go beyond that, there is a two-stage accelerator pedal where you can floor it and go as fast as you want. I'm actually quite surprised at how well this Land Rover Defender goes around a corner. There's a little bit of initial body roll, but it's neutral. And for how high the center of gravity is, it handles very, very well at or near the limit. Even on these all-terrain tires, there's a little bit of tire squeal, but the independent suspension does its job and uh, the road manners here are very impressive.
even though there's probably a little bit more wind noise in this Defender than there would be in a more aerodynamic Land Rover product, it's still pretty comfortable and cozy on the highway. You could put some serious miles on this thing and be just fine. This Defender is rated for 17 miles to the gallon in the city and 22 on the highway for a 19 MPG combined rating. This week with all the idling and, you know, filming we've been doing, we've averaged about 15 miles to the gallon. But in normal driving, you shouldn't do too bad with this thing. I do like the way this inline six sounds. It manages to still sound kind of industrial and rugged, but also refined in the upper registers. As you can see back there merging over you pretty much have zero visibility out of the side window after the C pillar. There's not much that you can see behind the seats, but you do get a blind spot monitoring system, and uh, these mirrors are positioned quite nicely to show you what's around you. Speaking of mirrors, because rearward visibility is so hindered, you do get a camera that integrates nicely into this rear view mirror, and that's probably what I've been driving with most of the time. While we're just cruising here, let's do a sound system test. We have a Meridian sound system. It does do a pretty nice job. You have volume controls on the steering wheel right there. Volume knob is pretty conveniently located for passengers right there. Meridian sound system sounds great, no issues there. Upon first impressions, I think Land Rover's done a pretty awesome job with this new Defender. It keeps surprising me on road and off road. Dynamically, it's just a fantastic vehicle to drive. And there's a cool factor here that I think is worth mentioning and probably a big reason why a lot of people are going to buy this thing. Also, there is such a large appeal to a vehicle like this that can be both luxurious and rugged at the same time. That's what I absolutely love about my Lexus GX460 and uh, this Land Rover Defender just does it, I think, the best of anything out there. Nothing quite has the road manners that this does, but also the off-road capability and that breadth of performance. Some of that is facilitated by a lot of the tech that's in this thing, and it is a complicated vehicle. 
Lights is no longer the simple off-roader that it once was. But you know what? This is 2020, almost 2021, and uh, I think they've done a really nice job integrating that tech into the way this thing is designed. And if you want that extra power, this inline six is a peach. However, the standard four cylinder would probably do just fine for most people's needs. Amazing ride quality, looks fantastic, drives great, can pretty much do everything you need off-road in stock form. Probably would want to upgrade to a slightly more aggressive all-terrain tire but and throw on some front skid plates and maybe a winch, but otherwise uh, you've got a pretty capable vehicle here. The camera system is neat, that's kind of a, a useful feature for off-roading. Lots of towing capacity. There is a lot to like here with this new Defender. Right, guys well that's going to wrap up this first impressions video on what this defender is like to drive on the street as always let me know if you have any questions in the comments it's always great to hear from you guys and uh yeah thanks for watching it'd be great to get some more time in this defender off road uh the stars just didn't quite align for me later this week but in the future i can see us doing some fun things in one of these things until then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Take care. You can see here I've put it into access mode height. It gets pretty low pretty much slams to the ground and it looks kind of looks kind of cool because of that I love how they've cut off this exhaust tip just to help with departure angle very thoughtful very cool